We've examined mechanical systems where we have a force input and our output would be displacement. And now we're going to look at an electromechanical system, which is one where we have an electrical input with a mechanical output. So here's an example of an electromechanical door lock. The specific system we'll look at is a DC motor, brushed DC motor, and we're going to develop the transfer function giving the output over the input. Again, the output is position and input is voltage. A refers to the motor armature, and we have here a model of the armature circuit. Armature has resistance, inductance, and then we have a back EMF. Briefly, the way the motor operates is that current flows through the armature. That current induces a magnetic field, which interacts with the magnetic field of the stator. This generates a torque, which turns the rotor. When the rotor turns, now there is a conductor that's moving in a magnetic field, so a, a voltage is generated. And this is called the back EMF because it opposes the motion of the motor. It opposes the applied voltage at the armature. The back EMF magnitude is proportional to the speed of the rotor, and that constant of proportionality is called is KB, which is the back EMF constant, or speed constant, or voltage constant. So we can write the loop equation for the armature and take the Laplace transform to get this expression. We have the armature resistance times the current plus the inductance times the time derivative of the current plus the back EMF. The sum of those is equal to the applied voltage at the armature. Now we can't use this directly to get our transfer function, so we need to <coughs> make some substitutions in order to get the position instead of current and voltage. The motor torque for a DC motor is proportional to the current, and that constant is called the torque constant. So here's the expression. So the motor torque is equal to the product of the torque constant and the current. Taking the Laplace transform of this gives us the Laplace transform of the torque is equal to the is equal to KT times the Laplace transform of the current. Now, if we consider Newton's second law, we know that torque and displacement are related. So we're going to use that information in order to relate current to the displacement. <coughs> Here's a typical application for a motor. We'd have the motor, some gearing, and then it'd be connected to the load. The motor has moment of inertia, JA, in the armature, and it has damping, DA, and the load also has some moment of inertia and damping. Now, as far as the motor is concerned, it just sees um, an effective moment of inertia and damping. So this is the system that we'll consider where we have the moment of inertia and damping seen by the motor. And here's an expression relating the motor torque to the position, given these impedances, Jm s squared plus dMs. So now we can substitute back in order to get our transfer function. So again, here's the loop equation, and we substitute for Ia and Vb in terms of displacement. Ia is the motor torque divided by the torque constant and that's equal to the impedances times the displacement divided by the torque constant. And VB is the speed constant times the, dis the, sp the velocity. <coughs> so if we assume that the inductance is negligible, then we get this transfer function for the motor, relating the displacement to the armature voltage. KT, RA, JM are all constants that pertain to the motor and the load. And KB also is a parameter of the motor. So this has the form of constant divided by S over S plus another constant. This is a pure integrator. So if you think about what the displacement would do, this sort of goes along with intuition. If we apply a constant voltage to the motor, eventually the motor would just be going at a constant speed, and so the displacement would be a ramp function, and 
that's uh, the integral of the input of the step function. Now in some instances you don't have access to the parameters for the motor, but it's possible to obtain them by using a dynamometer to measure the speed and torque at a given voltage. So let's look at the equations for how to do that. We can start by again assuming that the inductance is negligible. And so from our loop equation we have this expression. We can take the inverse Laplace transform and then assume that we're at steady state with a constant voltage. And so our torque, speed, and voltage are no longer functions of time. One thing that we see is at a constant voltage that torque is proportional to speed, so this is at steady state. We can rearrange this equation to solve for the torque and then plot that for a given voltage. So if we are if the motor is at armature voltage one, then the torque speed curve looks like this, where again torque is proportional to speed. The torque output by the motor at zero speed is called the stall torque and the highest speed the motor can achieve is one where it's there's no torque resisting it and that's called the no load speed. So from these two ends of the curve you can get the motor parameters just by setting the speed and torque to zero in this equation. When speed is zero then we can solve for the quotient KT over RA, it's the ratio of the stall torque to the voltage, and when the torque is zero, then we can use the no load speed and the voltage to solve for the voltage constant KB. Let's consider an example where we want to get the transfer function. We have a motor that at 12 volts outputs 55 newton meters at 600 radians per second and also at 12 volts the stall torque is found to be 100 newton meters. The motor has an armature moment of inertia of 7 and armature damping of 3. We'll just ignore the units on this. And the load has a moment of inertia of 105. And the load is connected to the motor through this gear chain. Now what we, want, what we want to do is find the transfer function relating the load displacement to the armature voltage. <coughs> That's one thing to be careful about. The transfer function we developed earlier was the motor displacement, but the motor displacement is proportional to the load displacement, uh, and that's given by the gear ratio. So to start with, in order to write the transfer function, we're going to need the motor parameters the torque constant, voltage constant, armature resistance. And we can use these values found to get that. So we'll start with this equation. And we know that EA is 12 volts. So one data point has EA is 12 volts. Mm, the motor torque is 55 and the speed is 600. <coughs> the other data point, again the voltage is 12, motor torque is 100 and the speed is 0. So we will use that stall torque to solve for KT over RA. Speed is 0, we get 100 equals KT over RA times 12 and that gives us that the quotient KT over RA is 25 over 3 and now our other data point we have 55 as the motor torque and that is equal to negative KB over RA I'm oh, sorry KT over RA which we found is 25 thirds times KB times the motor speed plus KT over RA times the voltage. And this gives us that K 
AB is 9 times 10 to the negative 3. So the units for this would be, I guess, volts per radians per second. <coughs> Now, we know the motor parameters and we can find the transfer function for the motor. And here it is again. Here's the equation for that. <coughs> but we need to know JM and well, I have CM here, but it was DM in the other figure. So, um, hmm. See them there also. See them everywhere, except for in this figure in this equation. Okay, so we'll call it CM, even though in this figure it's DM. Um, CM, C is a bit more common for damping. Uh, all right, so the moment of inertia seen by the motor, JM is equal to the armature moment of inertia plus and then now we need to perform reflection on the moment of inertia from the load so we have 12 over 25 times 25 over 12 and that's squared we've got the the source teeth the number of teeth on the source divided by the number of destination divided by the number of on teeth on the source times the number of teeth on the destination divided by the number of teeth on the source and all that is squared. So we had 12 over 25 times 25 over 72 squared times JL and that's equal to 7 plus 12 over 72 squared times 105 which is equal to 9.9167 so that's JM and then <coughs> CM is equal to CA in this case which is 3 so there's no damping at the load now we can go back to our transfer function equation for the motor so the motor displacement divided by the input voltage is equal to KT over RA divided by JM and the denominator of the transfer function is S times S plus 1 over JM times CM plus KT over RA times KB and that's equal to Twenty five over three is what K T over R is. So twenty five over three times one over nine point nine one six seven. The denominator we have S times S plus one over nine point nine one six seven times three plus twenty five over three times 9 times 10 to the negative 3. This is probably illegible on the video, but we're just using this equation, plugging in the values that we found up here. And the result that we get is 0 0.840 divided by S times S plus 0.31. So that's the transfer function for the motor displacement to the input voltage, but remember that the motor displacement is six times the load displacement. Uh, we found that <coughs> would be the gear ratio. We have 25 over 12 times 72 over 25 for the gear ratio, which turns out to be six. So this gives us that the transfer function that we want, which was the load displacement divided by the input voltage is just this divided by 6, so 0 0.140. It'll have the same dynamic characteristics because the 
load displacement is not independent from the motor displacement, but it just has a different magnitude. 